Having talked about statistical power, the ability to reject the null hypothesis if our treatment truly has an impact, there's a flip side to this coin that I want to talk about, and that's effect size. As you know, there's a lot of things that we can do to increase our statistical power. One of them could be to increase our sample size. If we are to increase our sample size to a ridiculous amount, let's say a thousand people, then essentially any small difference between the treatment and our control group would be statistically significant. If vitamin water were to improve people's IQ by half a point, and we had a sample, size of a thousand people, we'd be able to reject the null hypothesis because half a point is extremely unlikely to happen just due to sampling error when your sample size is a thousand people. But would it be worthwhile for someone to consume 24 ounces of vitamin water every single day for the rest of their life to maintain that half point IQ? No, it wouldn't. And that's what effect size is all about. Is it worth it? It's that question, so what? So as shared, the bigger you make your sample, the more power you have. The easier it is to show that a difference existed because of your treatment. But again, at some point, we have to ask that question, so what? Even though something is statistically significant, doesn't tell us that it's meaningful. To help get an idea of whether something is meaningful or not, there is a measure of how effective is the treatment? It's called Cohen's D. The way you calculate Cohen's D is you take the difference between the two conditions and divide it by the standard deviation. So in my uh, prior example, uh, we saw that our sample had an average IQ of 102. And again, if you have a large enough sample size, you can show that statistically significant. So 102 and the population mean is 100. So the difference between those conditions is, is 2. And for IQ, uh, it's known that the standard deviation is 16. A person could look that up. So you have 2, which is the difference between the population and, and our treatment. We divide it by standard deviation, which is 16. And that comes out to be 0.13. What does that mean? Well, Cohen said that after you divide the difference between the conditions by a standard deviation, if your result was around 0.2 or less, consider it a weak effect, kind of a not very big deal. If your result is around 0.5, that's a medium size effect. That's kind of a take notice, it's of interest. And if when you divide the difference between the conditions by a standard deviation and you get a value of 0.8 or larger, consider that a large effect, an impressive effect, something for people to definitely take notice of. So when we look at the p-value of a statistical test, it doesn't tell us how big of an effect there was. It just lets us know whether or not sampling error was the likely cause, if the null hypothesis was true. A p-value of 0.05 or less we reject the null hypothesis. We say sampling error is unlikely to uh, have been able to cause this. The next step often is to then calculate Cohen's D to say, well, how big of an effect are we talking about here? And again, if that uh, Cohen's D is 0.8, then that's considered a large. If it's 0.5, it's medium. If it's 0.2 or less, it's weak. So here's a conclusion uh, for this presentation on hypothesis testing. First, with hypothesis testing, we evaluate the probability that sampling error could have caused a difference between the conditions, assuming the null was true. It's all about evaluating the null hypothesis. If the probability is less than or equal to our alpha level, we'll reject the null hypothesis. Second, we must be able to rule out alternative explanations for results. That is, there shouldn't be any confounds. Uh, that is, um, if I were to have my treatment group start off as college students, we already know that college students are brighter uh, than the average population. That would be a confound. If I gave people uh, uh, workshops on how to improve your IQ in addition to taking vitamin water, that would be a confound. 
We only want one difference between our two groups, in this case between the treatment and the population. If we want to increase our power, we talked about you could use a larger sample. You should make sure your manipulation uh, ideally should have a large effect. You should use a dependent variable that's reliable. It's fairly accurate. Select an appropriate uh, statistical test that's sensitive uh, to identifying if a relationship or a different success. And also you could change alpha. As we mentioned, uh, you increase alpha and you increase your type 1 errors even though you decrease type 2, which is a uh, uh, failure to reject the null when you should. Just because a result is statistically significant does not mean it has practical value. So we talked about how Cohen's D is a measure of that practical significance. Finally, go back and review the decision matrix. Be able to draw it from memory and uh, correctly label correct decision, type 1 error, type 2 error. That's important terminology when we talk about hypothesis testing. And as shared, increasing alpha results in less type 2 errors. That is, you've lowered the criterion for how much evidence is needed to reject the null. Um, but, you're, again, if, if you lower that decision criterion, if you make it easier to reject the null, you're also going to then increase your type 1 errors. It wrongly reject the null hypothesis due to bogus evidence. That is, just due to, to sampling error. All right. I hope this was helpful. Take care.